this in. Good evening, all. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, Monday, June 11th, 2012. Uh, can we have the roll call? Uh, yes, uh, Chairman Lennon. Here. Uh, Frank Obanali. Here. Caitlin Jordan. Here. Catherine Ray. Here. David Sherman. Here. Jessica Sullivan. Here. James Walsh. Here. And the, the town clerk is busy preparing for tomorrow's election. And she has taken with her the flag, but we're going to uh, pledge allegiance to the flag outside. We just have to pretend the walls aren't here. Okay. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, reports and correspondence. Yeah. Uh, I attended a meeting of the Ordinance Committee a few days ago with Jim and Kathy and wanted to remind uh, everybody that the Planning Board will be holding a public hearing on the issue of a proposed ordinance amendments for, to deal with short-term rentals. And that public hearing is June 19th. I believe, at 7 o'clock here in the town hall. So if you're interested in that issue, please come and attend and feel free to offer your views to the planning board. Caitlin? And I just wanted to mention that the Cape Farm Alliance will be having the fourth annual Strawberry Fest this month, uh, June 30th, down on Two Lights. It's free for bring your families and come enjoy all the festivities. Jessica? Um, yes. Um, I'd like to uh, announce, especially for those who may not be aware, that uh, Cape Elizabeth's library director was uh, nominated, oh, there he is, he's walking in right now, nominated uh, uh, and uh, awarded the Maine Outstanding Librarian for 2012 in May uh, by the Maine Library Association Conference last month. Uh, this um, award, uh, our uh, was voted upon by the selection committee. Um, our uh, town manager, Mike McGovern, was present. It was, <clears throat> however, it's a huge honor for our director, Jay Sherma. And just to read a couple of quotations uh, that were in the courier, uh, Sarah Smudgen, who's the director of the uh, Waterville Public Library, is quoted as saying, she, I've been working in libraries for 25 years, and there are a lot of good and some great librarians, she said. Then, she added, there are the ones like Jay Sherma, director of the Thomas Memorial Library. Jay really gets it. He's the kind of librarian we should all aspire to be like. This uh, Smudgen was chairman of the committee that selected Jay. The award is intended to honor those who have demonstrated outstanding service, not only to their own libraries and communities, but also to the profession. Um, one of the most outstanding achievements uh, and uh, of note that Jay has, has, is responsible for, he's in, he was instrumental in expanding the Minerva system, which is uh, the statewide system for interlibrary loans. He really got that off the map for Maine. So not only has he done a tremendous job serving Cape Elizabeth citizens, but also citizens throughout the state. Um, I wonder, Mike, if you might want to add anything because you were there for that presentation. Yeah, it, it was just a wonderful ceremony, and it was particularly good that Jay's uh, wife, Ann, was able to be there as well, uh, with, and Rachel and Kevin Davis and their daughter, Violet. And just to see so many uh, librarians across the state who, who you know, clearly have a lot of affection uh, for, for Jay on a personal level, uh, but, but even more so a professional respect for, for what he has done with ex expanding the opportunity for interlibrary loan and of, you know, creating professionalism, uh, additional professionalism to the library uh, sciences and the library field throughout Maine. Thank Congratulations, you. Jay. Congratulations. Uh, two just quick announcements. Number one, at the risk of stating the obvious, tomorrow is election day, uh, and so everybody please get out and vote. 
Um, and the second is I'd just like to extend thanks to all the many, many people who contributed to make graduation yesterday uh, just a really beautiful, lovely, well-orchestrated, professional, and, and, and touching event. So thank you to, to all those, the, the parent volunteers and the uh, school administration and faculty and parents and grandparents and kids and everyone. So it, was, it just made me feel so proud to be part of this community. So, anyone else? Okay. Uh, this is the first opportunity for citizens to speak on an item that's not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none, town manager's report. Uh, yes, thanks, Sarah. I want to uh, quickly mention a couple of things. Uh, first, you know, the, the, the election is tomorrow, uh, and because of that, the t town tax office and clerk's office will not be open because of the, the difficulties with staff in the election. The rest of the town hall will be open. And if anyone has any election business, that, uh, you know, registering to vote, anything like that, they should go directly to the high school down around, down around the back, uh, that we won't be able to assist them here uh, at the town hall. Uh, secondly, I, I would like to note the passing over the weekend of Ken Maxwell. Uh, some of you might have known uh, uh, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, he's the patriarch of the Maxwell family here in Cape Elizabeth, uh, along with he, his, his wife Elsie. Uh, you know, helped to get Maxwell Farm started. Was uh, you know, sort of there were the Jordans and there, there were the Maxwells, and they were they were the you know the leading farmers. The, those two, two sets of families in Cape Elizabeth, and Ken was a longtime volunteer uh, in the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department. I think about 50 years of service uh, as as one of our call firefighters and. Uh, you know, just want to express sympathies to his, his wife, Elsie, and uh, the entire family who are active in so many ways uh, in Cape Elizabeth. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, draft minutes from May 14th. Do I have a motion? Jessica? I move that we accept the draft minutes of May 14, 2012. Second. Any amendments or comments, changes? All those in favor? Uh, long last, we arrive at item number 94-2012. Uh, after much deliberation, debate, discussion, and actually productive conversation, here we are. So does anyone want to give a motion? Jessica? I move that we um, accept item 94. Uh, the wording of the draft question for the November referendum, shall the town of Cape Elizabeth borrow six million to fund a new Thomas Memorial Library and Cultural Center and accept private donations to assist with the project? I'll second. And then there's a yes or no that you simply circle. Uh, discussion? I have, Sarah, I have a question. And, um, I talked to the manager about this a little bit earlier and I don't know what the, the feeling of should the wording be, shall the town of Cape Elizabeth borrow up to six million as opposed to a six million dollar number? I mean, it just seems to me that, that how we arrived at this six was a bit of a moving sort of number and that there's a lot of work that needs to go into developing whatever it is that we're going to do. I just wonder if it's, if, if there's a, a need to have this state up to six million as opposed to six million. It sounds as though six is the number, and if we were to come up with a plan for five million, we'd still borrow six. I mean, I, I just, I, I want to, I want to give, I want to give our community the chance to understand that we're we're working on this and want it to be the most cost effective and the best value for the money. And I just present that as an option, a discussion. What do others think? I think it's a good idea. I agree. That's how we're planning to do it. Okay. So, Jessica, can you redo your motion or add that? <clears throat> Sure. Um, I, I move that we amend item 94-2012 
to read, shall the town of Cape Elizabeth borrow up to six million to fund a new Thomas Memorial Library and Cultural Center and accept private donations to assist with the project? And the options are yes or no. And I'll second that. Discussion? Right? Yeah, I, I'm not objecting to that amendment, but the one little trap that's, that's here is that, particularly as we go out fund, you know, seeking the private monies, folks are going to be looking at what has the council committed to put into the project. And, you know, if there's, if there's a hint that, you know, the council might be reneging on part of their commitment, and, you know, and I know no one intends that this evening, uh, and, I, you know, I, I, and I think the spirit in which it's, it's offered is, is, is important, and, you know, you hope that you could get a less expensive project. I, I, you know, I think the reality is, is that, you know, from everything we've looked at and with the needs assessment it is or whatever, you know, we're, we're, in order to really accomplish the need for the, the program that a couple of years of committees have looked at and identified, it was really going to take about eight and a half million dollars. Uh, in essence, the six million was, was forcing a budget cut of about a million dollars, assuming about a million and a half privately raised and six million. So I just expressed concern that the up to could be, in the fundraising aspect of this, uh, you know, could create some, some doubt uh, in the future. But I, but I will say that most times when referenda are on ballots, up to is, is the more common usage. So I just, you know, you go with it. I just wanted to say, you know, to provide some background of concern in case it comes up that I, I don't hate to use the word I forewarned you, that sounds a little harsh, but uh, that, I, that I cautioned that uh, so that interpretation could be there. So Michael, the, when DeMont presented the potential to us, I'm trying to remember, it was in a workshop and he presented to us this, this sort, of, sort of rolling number. It could be a million, it could be up to a million, whatever. Um, what, were, there, there, um, were there parts of his presentation that potential donors stated emphatically that their donation would only come as a result of us putting up X? Or, I, I didn't remember it being sort of a, a, a you know, if, if this, then that. I, I didn't get that sense. I got the sense there was more of a broader possibility and less around what we did or didn't do. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to reconcile that conversation. Okay. Yeah, well, well, in fact, DeMont and Associates was recommending we privately fundraise before the town commit, committed to okay. anything. So, All right. I, so I don't think that would... Mike's concern arose out of their recommendation. I, I understand where the town manager is coming from, but I think it's more important that we have some flexibility going forward. I also think it's important for citizens to understand that we may continue either through the council or a building committee to figure out ways to make the project more economical. So I think we really should go with the up to. Up to. Understanding the risk of okay. seeking donations might be impacted by that. Yeah, I had, I had forgotten that, David, that they, they really, they, they wanted to put the fundraising efforts first and we were the ones who kind of changed that strategy, so. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess a couple of things I just wanted to say. Uh, first, I'm um, very enthusiastic that this is going to referendum and I think it's, uh, from the start I always thought this was, the library project was uh, significantly important for the town and uh, both in terms of its central role in the community as well as the cost that it should really be voted on by <coughs> um, residents directly. So I'm pleased we're doing that. I also uh, wanted to just go on record in terms of my own view on, on the current proposal. I'm not sure if there's any other better time to do that. So I thought tonight would probably be an opportunity just to restate some of the issues which I have, with, have had with it, even though I fully support this vote for the referendum. Um, and these are not new issues, so I'm just really summarizing some of the issues which I've, I've voiced concern about from the start. Um, first of all is the cost. Uh, even though we've trimmed a million dollars uh, off of a project which had been planned for many, many years to uh, and came in at about eight and a half million dollars, um, 
it's still a lot of money for a town of 9,000 people. This is almost $900 for every man, woman, and child in town, which I think is very high, uh, particularly in this period of uh, economic stress. Um, secondly, I still haven't um, embraced the notion that we should have uh, a cultural center attached to the library. Uh, my view is that our town is not large enough to have the critical mass to support a first-class cultural program, and that if indeed one is possible, then the more prudent approach is to develop a program, use facilities in town that are available, whether they're town facilities or churches that are available during the week or a variety of spaces that can be used to develop a program, prove it in, and then um, you know, if it works, if it's something that's important, then we could uh, look at that later on down the road. Um, third, uh, I still have the view that nobody knows how libraries are going to be used in the future. I don't think books are going away. Uh, they've been around for a long time. But clearly, media, electronic media, is changing the way people use um, books, the way in which they learn, which they gather information. And nobody really knows how um, this is going to develop over the years. And for us to put up this much money at this transitional period in time, to me, doesn't seem appropriate. Um, the, um, the final thing is, is the issue of meeting space. That's sort of related to the, I think it's very related to the cultural, the cultural um, uh, center proposal. Uh, again, I think there is space available, whether it's town space, school space, or privately owned space in town that would avoid <coughs> us having to put the money up, up front. Uh, bottom line is, I fully support libraries. I love libraries. I use our libraries. I think this is too big a plan, uh, too expensive. I would love to see um, other approaches develop between now and the time it goes to referendum, and, and I would love to be able to support it. Uh, I recognize there are needs in the library to uh, renovate it, to uh, bring it up to code in many respects, uh, but the current plan, I think, is uh, overkill for a town like ours. So. Thank you. Um, just to piggyback on that, I was going to, I was going to just float out this question before we vote, and that is, do we want to have the language cultural center in here? I know we've heard from several people that have questioned that as well, the people who came and, and so do we want to tie our hands in that way? Maybe, I know a lot of the planners and the initial people feel very passionately they want a cultural center, but what if we hear from lots and lots of citizens between now and the vote that they want it to be something different? like Frank's talking about, like a more of a library or technology center, whatever. So do we, just raising, floating the question, do we, would it be simpler to just say fund a new Thomas Memorial Library with the people's understanding that that is what we've been discussing? Just for maximum flexibility. Yeah. In, in my view, a library is a cultural center, uh, even if you don't call it that. Uh, there's programming at the library, uh, it appeals from uh, preschool children all the way up to our senior citizens. Uh, so I'm not necessarily wedded to the words cultural center in this referendum question. I think by definition in, in today's world, a library also includes a technology center. And if you go into uh, most libraries, especially the Portland Public Library, it is uh, overflowing with technology. And uh, so again, I don't think you have to say it in this question. Uh, I, I don't want anybody who's been supportive of the library project to think that I'm, I'm not in favor of it being a cultural center, but I think libraries are already. So I'm not sure we need that language. And I think it may be confusing to people, and it could just be a distraction in the vote uh, that people may say, oh, well, we don't need a cultural center. That's my fear, so. that it will be a deterrent. I mean, I think people might read it and say, yeah, I understand we need a library, and I would vote for that, but I don't want the cultural center, therefore I'm voting now. So I don't want to lose votes on just our language. But anyway, I, I would understand people who would disagree. If, if, if the vision is a cultural center and you're very, very wedded to that, we should be honest and put it. Just raising it as a possibility. Yeah. Just a way of background. This came about as a result of a, a lot of discussion we had with, with a group that was reviewing issues over the DeMont study. And, you know, it, it, it was what they were getting a reaction from, from folks is that, that that portion of it ought to be emphasized. You know, I agree the council sense got a lot of other feedback that this is misunderstood. I know, you know, really what we're talking about is programming space for library programs. And, you know, in, and all of this does fall under the, the umbrella of library programs. But, I, you know, I understand where, where Dave Sherman's coming from. This term has been misunderstood 
by, by uh, some individuals and that it rarely is talking about programming space within the library. <coughs> I mean, I, I think that, I mean, I certainly could um, go along with removing that terminology because I agree with what uh, Councillor Sherman just said. I mean, a library is a, is a cultural center. It's shared experience, learning, and all that. Um, and I won't take the time at this moment to debate Councillor um, Governale's <laughs> assertions, but I can tell you that um, there has been a facilities review committee that is, is, has wrapped up. Uh, conclusions are not final yet, but in fact, um, there is a great need for certain types of meeting space in town. A place where people can comfortably sit, a place that is available as the library is six days a week, all year long. The schools are closed during the summers. Um, there are areas in town frequently discussed, such as the fire station and the police station, but one must remember it. They are things like fire stations and police stations, and they are not frequently available for the types of meeting and programming that, you know, a meeting space in the library would provide. Um, and as, as I'm sure many of you are aware, what's, what is currently in the library is, is uh, abysmal, to put it mildly. So um, I, I don't want to go along uh, on any more on that, but um, I, I certainly am comfortable with removing that language if it's uh, the will of the council or if you think it would be appropriate because it may in fact uh, confuse people. But it is meeting space and programming space that, that really is what, what the library needs and what is really greatly needed in our town. I just think echoing Jim's earlier comment on the draft motion, this just gives maximum flexibility Absolutely. and yeah. removes confusion. It really so, does. So procedurally, would Jessica just have to accept the amendment as the person who yeah. made the motion? And then the seconder would have to second that? Or does she restate it? You know, for, the council's never all that formal. If, you know, we, we could start with a fresh motion and, and have clean minutes if that's, okay. it would be easier for the acting clerk. <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's really all about the minute taker. So I sense we have a, a, a majority that feels that that would be yeah, I wise. Think it's, yeah. Okay, so Jessica, I'm sorry, but can you one more time? Thank yes, you. yes, <laughs> Chairman Lennon, I'll be, I'll be happy to amend my original motion to read. Shall the town of Cape Elizabeth borrow up to $6 million to fund a new Thomas Memorial Library and accept private donations to assist with a project the uh, answers would selected would be either yes or no. Make sure the clerk has this. I second it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> Is there any more discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, hey, item 95, 2012, uh, proposed charter amendment. And this is to set it for a public hearing Monday, July 9th at 7 p.m. in the town hall. Does someone want to make a motion? Okay. Uh, I move that we set for a public hearing on Monday, July 9, 2012, a proposed amendment to the charter for the town of Cape Elizabeth relating to when we would put uh, uh, a single capital expenditure item on our agenda out to a re public referendum. I'll s okay. Second. Discussion? Second. Okay. Again, I, I would compliment uh, Dave Sherman for bringing this forward. I think that we've certainly listened to the citizens here in Cape Elizabeth over this library issue. And I think this is a sort of a direct outcome of that that listening exercise that our community is very concerned about uh, expenditures of this nature and have uh, made it very clear to many of us either in email form or in private or in public that they wish to weigh in on these types of uh, expenditures so I look forward to a uh, public hearing and determining the will of the citizens in terms of going to a referendum. Just to be clear, I think most people know, but it, there has always been a mechanism by which citizens can force a vote on a large expenditure, and that is to gather signatures, about 700, which is 10 percent? 
um, and, and submit them by a certain date. And that would for, that forces um, a project to go to a referendum. It's obviously a much higher um, bar to jump over than having it be automatic. And that's with all the um, the citizens weighing in on this library issue and essentially saying we want to vote on it. That's why we sort of came to this um, place where we're considering possibly making um, it automatic that any project of a million dollars or over would automatically go out to a citizen referendum, and that's what we'll be discussing in next month's council meeting. Many other communities already do that. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons, um, and we look forward to hearing from citizens either here in the public hearing next month or by email or phone or any other way, because it's, it's a relatively big step. So, any other comments? Dave? I think it would be helpful as we get into that public hearing if we could learn more about how often the council has actually had to vote on a single capital expenditure of a, a, a million dollars or more. I think since I've been on the council, which is now four years, I'm not sure I've ever had to vote on that uh, type of issue. So it, 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 some people may think, oh, this comes up all the time and the council is sort of abdicating its role, but if it's, if it's not a, a real frequent occurrence, I think that's just interesting information for the public and for us on the council to have. Maybe as a 10-year retrospective or something, how frequently that's occurred. No problem. <laughs> Thank you, Clark. <laughs> Any other comments? Get promoted. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. Item number 96, 2012, the annual adoption of the general assistance limits. Uh, does someone want to make a motion? Jessica? I move that we adopt uh, the uh, annual general assistance limits as presented. Oh, sorry, public hearing. Don't see anyone here, but let's open the public hearing. Um, so I apologize. Uh, this item does actually have a public hearing to precede it, so I will open the public hearing, and anyone who wishes to come forward and speak on this, please step up to the podium. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, and go back to item number 96. I'm sorry, Jessica. This seems to be a pattern tonight. Can you, <laughs> sure. Can you repeat your... Yes, I'll be happy to. Um, I move that we uh, uh, accept the annual uh, adoption of the general assistance limits as presented. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Item number 97, 2012, the local buzz annual license. I see. Dawn is here. Do you, would you like to speak? No? Do you want to speak or in case, just be here in case we have questions or? <clears throat> okay. Um, do I have a motion? Jim? I'm going to move uh, that uh, the uh, local buzz annual license, um, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve the application for the Cape Cafe LLC doing business as the local buzz LLC for the renewal of their malt, Venus, and spiritus licenses and special amusement permit for the business at, located at 327 Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth. Discussion? I just like to take this opportunity to thank you, Don and Jamie and the other owners for bringing the, this much needed gathering place to our town and working incredibly hard as I know you do because I've never been there and not seen you there, um, on, really on behalf of the community. So thank you so much. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, item number 98, Townways Ordinance. Mo, do I have a motion? Uh, I move that the council refer to the ordinance committee a proposed amendment to chapter 17 of the code of ordinances uh, and also request that the ordinance committee conduct a general general review of chapter 17 and just 
to be clear, this relates primarily to the appeal of uh, the Director of Public Works' decision on a driveway permit. Instead of going to the council, the proposed amendment is that it would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. You mean in the past that that instance would have gone directly and something similar of that nature going forward? Exactly. Is there a second? Second it. Discussion? Yeah, I just have a question. If, if under this uh, amendment, would the Zoning Board of Appeals be the final level of appeal? Locally, it would be uh, appealable on a, a Rule 80B appeal, I believe, to uh, the main Superior Court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? I just want to say that I think this is a great idea. I think that the, it's very hard as a council member to make these decisions because really it's not in our purview. Um, it's more legal than I think we should be doing. So I, I applaud this. Uh, all those in favor? Yes. Uh, item number 99, 2012, solid waste ordinance. Is there a motion? Um, I move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council refer to the Ordinance Committee proposed amendments to Chapter 11, Article 2 of the Code of Ordinances and also request that the Committee to conduct a general review of Chapter 11, Article 2. Second. Discussion? Sorry to keep moving things over to your desk. That's we, Ordinance we Committee. thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> Kathy just said, what are we doing? We, we haven't got anything coming up. So. And now you do. <laughs> I won't say that again. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, item 100, 2012, Public Works Collective Bargaining Agreement for 2012 through 2014. Do I have a motion? Frank? I move that the Cable of Town Council approve the proposed <clears throat> collective bargaining agreement with Local 340 of the Teamsters representing certain public works employees. You want the full note to be uh, read? I guess maybe it should be. Does it have to be? Oh, the clerk is going to have to take the note. That's right, really. It's not going to include as part of the motion. Though. Okay. It should be noted that the draft agreement provides a 3% COLA adjustment on July 1st, 2012, and an adjustment on July 1st, 2013 of CPIU for the 12 months ended December 31st, 2012, but not to exceed 3%. It also requires all paychecks to be direct deposited effective July 1, 2013. It provides public works employees <coughs> comp compensatory time off if the town council should close for more than four hours due to a winter storm event. Town hall should close, not town council. Winter storm event. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Just a uh, clarifying uh, winter storm event, could it be a summer storm event? It's written as a winter storm <coughs> event. Okay. Hmm. Other discussion, questions? All those in favor? I'd ask for opposition. I'm sorry. All those opposed? Yes. Hmm. So six to one. I was just on a roll with our unanimous votes. I didn't even look to my right. <coughs> Item 101, uh, acceptance of regional domestic violence grant. Is there a motion? Frank? Uh, I move that the Town Council of Cape Elizabeth accepts a community development block grant through Cumberland County to partner with Family Crisis Services with Cape Elizabeth Police Department, being the lead agency for continuing the Supplemental Domestic Violence Victim Assistance Program. Seconded. Discussion? How much was the grant? It's approximately $50,000. I, I think it's in the packet. I believe it's 50. And then there's, there's a 10,000 match, most of which is in kind. And, and this is a program, we had the lead agency, but it also involves five or six other police departments. Mm -hmm. And we, we provide a small space at the Cape Elizabeth Police Station uh, for the domestic violence victim assistance counselor. And uh, it's been a very successful program. Uh, we received it a year ago. And when the Community Development Block Grant Review Committee uh, made up uh, of officials from you know, many communities in Cumberland County reviewed this, out of about 15 applications, this ranked second. Uh, 
uh, amongst all all the uh, mm -hmm. applications. So uh, it's been a it's been a good program, and it it's particularly good for us to have this in Cape Elizabeth, uh, where so many of the domestic violence cases uh, do do involve uh, males against females, and because of the uh, the fact that other than currently one part timer, uh, our force uh, by reasons of uh, just lack of applications is most is all men. This is this is really a, a godsend to be able to have this uh, resource uh, available locally. Mm -hmm. Mike, is this um, is it does the money get spent to assist the individuals, the victims, or is it just uh, covers our cost? It, it to do pays this? for the counselor and for her travel uh, amongst you know meeting with uh, pays the salary and pays overhead and, it, and for travel to the various communities. Uh, to assist the, uh, the folks who need help. And the role of the police department is they sort of the funnel that gets the information and work? We provide the, the office uh, and we, we, we're the sponsoring agency. And Family Crisis Shelter actually handles all the paperwork for us, which is, which is nice. Uh, they're a tenant of ours down at uh, Fort Williams, their administrative offices. Right. And uh, we've always had a very good, uh, healthy relationship with them, and uh, it's particularly good to work with them on this. Uh, Chief Williams particularly works with Lois Reckett, who's the head of family uh, crisis services, uh, in helping to administer the grant. And uh, you know, the, the the person who has been the, the victim assistance counselor has has really uh, linked well with our local police department in terms of you know not only you know the professional work, but also is very much a part of you know the the camaraderie amongst the group. In fact, you know. I, I went to their, their Christmas party, the holiday party, and you know she was an active participant. And it's good to see uh, the degree to which uh, this position has been really welcomed. And is her role to advise people on legal recourse or action and counseling and protection, or all of the above? All of the above. And any any assistance victims need of understanding the way the system works, understanding their rights, understanding their responsibility, <clears throat> understanding where to get help, how to get help, when to get it, uh, you know, really to be to be sure that as much as possible in one of these situations, and it is only as much as possible, uh, that they feel safe and they know how to get the help that they they need. All those in favor? Unanimous. Made the motion. Uh, Frank. I didn't. Okay, good. Item number 102, 2012, uh, annual auditor appointment. Just if I might, this has never been on your agenda before, but I was recently filling out a form of best practices for audit services, and one of them is, is that the governing body annually <coughs> makes the appointment at a public meeting. Is there a motion? Dave? Yeah. I move that we approve the audit engagement of Runyon, Kirstein, and Willette per the June 1st, 2012 draft letter of engagement. Second. Discussion? Mike, is any, in, in the public accounting realm, is there any requirement that auditors be switched every number of years or whatever? And how long have we had these guys? That's an excellent question. Uh, this is solely a council appointment. Uh, the staff should not be providing advice. Uh, because of the the, 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 con the the nature of our conflict with auditors, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, this firm has been our auditors for over 15 years. Uh, at one point, the council went through an extensive interview process and decided to re-up with them. Uh, we we do at the staff level, we do advise them from time to time that every three to four years they bring in a, a that there be a new senior person on the account, which is what the case has been. But this is, this is totally up to the council who the auditors are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if the council wishes to look at this and go out for a competitive proposal, maybe it's something the Finance Committee uh, might want to discuss uh, at the next meeting. Okay. I, I, I just don't want to give you advice. Uh, right. I think it's inappropriate. Um, in reading um, all the, uh, you delivered our mail to us at the last workshop. We appreciate you cleaning out the mailboxes. Yeah. But there are a couple of um, uh, periodicals from the governing group and then also from the main municipal. And in there, there was an article about 
a change in the annual audit process in government. And I, I you know, I, all I, all I it just picked up on the fact that there was some different sort of approaches to it, more periodic, you know, sample audits. Um, so I, I just wonder if, Michael, you had to take a look at that, it's whether there's any new conventions that are being employed in other places that can give us maybe that secondary view of the current audit process, you know, just by coming in, yeah. you know, nine months into the year, taking a look, see it, how the look, how things are shape, shape up and render an opinion. But I, I, was, I was interested that, that in the governing magazine, I, I can't believe I was reading the material, frankly, because it's, it's the kind of thing that, it, you know, puts you to sleep. But there was an article there that, that, did, in, that did trigger my interest. But, so for the sake of discussion here, based on what, what uh, Frank just talked about and what Michael just reported, is this a decision that has to be made today, or should we have the Finance Committee look at this? I would suggest that, you know, since I've already done the pre-work for this audit, yep. that you, you stay with this firm for the June 30 year about to end. Uh, you know, it would take quite a while. You know, they come in, they actually start our audit the second week of July. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and if you were to want to go out and, you know, competitively look at the market, that's something that would take a fairly lengthy period of time and it would delay getting our audit perhaps until after the first of the year. So okay. I would suggest Fine. if you want to do that, you look at it, yeah. you look at it going ahead to uh, June 30, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. 13, yeah. Okay. Get Thanks. Right. And also we can always ask this firm to try some different approaches as, yeah. as they outline, if we think that those make sense. You know, they, they always meet with the council chair of the finance committee chair. I don't know if that meeting's taken place yet. No. This year? I don't, has it, the last few weeks? No, I tried no. to turf it to Frank. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought, so they'll probably be wanting to meet with <laughs> I'm, 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 you, I'm Frank. Contact, so. Unless I missed I'll, I'll link you guys back up by email. Okay. okay. Uh, have you voted? All those, is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. <clears throat> Item 103, the Cape Courier space lease. Jessica? I move that we approve the updated lease with the Cape Courier for space here at the town hall. Second. Discussion? Do we do this annually? Mm -hmm. Almost. It's, it's the, the, the lease. This is a three-year lease, so you won't do it again for three years. Greg worked with the publisher on this one, Greg Miles. I'd just like to thank the Cape Courier for doing amazing work on a shoestring. It's basically a service to our town, and I know everyone, virtually everyone enjoys reading it, so thank you very much. I feel quite happy to lend them this basement space, or, or lease it to them. So all those in favor? Unanimous. Item 104, carry forward balances. <coughs> just wanted to mention three of them, mm -hmm. if I might. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, as you look down this list, the, the, these are items that, that aren't done for various reasons, and uh, the, the balance is get, carried forward July 1. Uh, there's, there's three of them that I would like to mention in particular. Just Shore Road, nothing unusual about it other than the fact that the project is due to begin June 18th. The contract's been signed. Uh, everything's good news there. Secondly, about uh, three-fourths of the way down, there's a, a one list is town hall meeting space, office space plan, $25,000. This amount is actually a, a carry forward balance of a balance you're creating <clears throat> this evening. Uh, and what this is, is would to enable you to move forward with the council goal of looking at the space, particularly here. Now, I think as we saw with the recent library forum, the, the limitations of trying to accomplish things in this room. And it's hoped that this would both do the plan and to begin to make some of the changes uh, that would help to accommodate better acoustics, better, better interaction with the public, particularly in this room, but also looking at other space. The, the other place where that is, is where it's also an appropriation that's being carried forward that has not yet been made, but you're, you're effectively doing it this evening, is the item listed as capital needs planning, $30,000. If you recall, the council had asked us to uh, go out and look competitively at, 
at providing uh, a firm to come in and look at the capital needs of the town and the school department. Uh, Greg uh, and Parlene handled this. Uh, the, there were a number of, 14 firms respond, Greg? Eight, eight, a lot of them took out the proposals, but only eight, eight responded, and this would pay for Harriman and Associates to work with us to, uh, over the summer to develop uh, the capital needs uh, for, for so the community is aware of them uh, in the months ahead as they vote on the library issue and as they vote uh, and as, you know, we, we look at capital needs in general. The, 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 Greg has been managing this process, and the, the current timetable is that we would expect some fairly good information around the 1st of, of September. September 3rd is the, the third. contract deadline to uh, provide us with the draft report. Do you want to come up here just so that in case the listening audience? In the original RFP, it's September 3rd to provide us with a draft report on the facilities that were identified. And at that time, we'll be able to take that review of that and then get them to uh, make any adjustments that we need and then give us, provide us a finalized report within about two weeks after that. Hmm. Brian? Um, Greg, uh, by draft, does it mean that it's uh, approximate or that it, they simply haven't provided all of the background data? Is it, are we going to have numbers that we can sort of be rely on? It will give initial numbers to, to uh, our facilities and what we should be looking at. The draft part of it is, did they cover everything that we were looking for? Did they need ad additional information added? Uh, was there a planning piece that we, we wanted in there that, that didn't show up in the draft report? And when you, you said this, but I didn't I recall hearing it. When is the final version? It'll, it'll come in about two weeks after we approve the draft with the changes. <clears throat> And is, just to be clear, is it all buildings? It's not just school, it's all our buildings. It's, it's school and town facilities. It's not, it's every, not building, every single. Primary buildings. And it's essentially anticipating what needs, what capital needs might exist in the coming, how many years? It, it's actually uh, based on a 10 year plan. It does not include the library, for instance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And unlike uh, Fort Williams, we don't have, this isn't an update to an original plan. This is. You know, they, they will be looking at, you know, what we have come up with otherwise for longer term building plans. Okay. They'll look at our existing CIP. However, you know, I think it was identified that, you know, a lot, a lot of the school projects were done 10, 15 years ago. And there may be issues, particularly within the schools that they want to look at for sure. some upgrades of, you know, roofs and uh, <clears throat> different systems, so. You know, it's, uh, they'll be looking at everything. Any space um, sort of evaluation being done as well as to what's being utilized or current mm -hmm. access space or? There's another committee that's been looking at that. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we get emails that say, you know, there's all sorts of space. Well, I know. We just got a couple. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, there's, it would be good to have it looked at as part of it uh, because there's a lot of, you know, stories out there that, not necessarily uh, in keeping with the reality of. Uh, well, you've got access space in this building for yeah. library books. No, I think if I had asked people how many knew we had a domestic violence person they wouldn't headquartered know. at the police department, they wouldn't know it. That's just an example. I don't think yeah. much of anyone knows that. Or that all the, the, the general assistance meetings, uh, that mm -hmm. that person, counselor, also meets at the police station. I don't think people would know that either. Yeah. So the RFP itself states space utilization. It does. It actually space. talks about space utilization Good. and looking at optimizing what we currently have. Yeah. Given the confines of what, you know, I think that's like great. the police station, for instance. Because that's, that's one of those questions that comes up constantly whenever right. we look at anything that we're doing. I, I do want to point out that the budget for this is $30,000. Yeah. And Harriman's proposal was 28 or so? Uh, 26 nine. 26 nines. We, we put a little extra, you know, as you do at the beginning of any project. You know, <clears throat> you don't get a full-blown, uh, you know, for every building to the degree that you might like uh, for this amount of money. We, we'll have a, a lot of good information, but, you know, it, it's no way near final design. Of, it points us in the right direction. It okay. points right. us in a direction. Good. That's right, Frank. And, but this will include just buildings. Um, how about our, I'm not supposed to do this, I'm just bringing it out for discussion. Um, Roads, sewers, lighting, 
things like that, you, you're sort of on top of that. That would sell us our own work, right? You that would, you know, necessitate a lot more money being spent to, and you know, for roads, you'd hire you'd hire a different firm to. But is that something that's really that. required? Um, um, do you see that as being required to have a consultant give us that insight, you know, or do we know that ourselves? Every few years, we ask the town council for some money to to hire a pay, to do a pavement management study. And the council's had some problems with that over the years. Uh, and, you know, we actually, we keep up quite a database ourselves. Uh, but there's, you know, there's some, you know, you, you, you go down Old Ocean House Road in front of your house, yeah. not to pick on a, on a place close to you, but, you know, the road's falling apart. Yeah, so is my fence. Yeah, so, you know, there's, uh, hmm. there's a lot of places that need, that need work. Can, can I just ask a question of Greg? Um, in your previous world, yes. did you do a capital plan there? Yes. So you know the right and the right questions to ask, the right Okay. Yes. Good. That's good. <laughs> so for twenty six thousand we're gonna get we'll get the rest of the answers that we need, which is great. You know, I do want to be very open about this because I've also cautioned uh, Greg through, through the superintendent of schools, through the chain of command, that you know, we don't want a wish list of everything that they'd like to have. Yeah. You know, the this the economy is still tough out there. And you know, it's we, we want a reasonable approach to this and, and, and not, not something that comes in that's so outlandish that, uh, you know, there, there needs to be some uh, moderate uh, uh, leavening of uh, wish. It seems to me, Mike, what we want is to, for, us, for them to tell us what we need, need to do so it's not going to cost us a lot more money in the future that's to right. address the problem. I think that's really the key issue. That's right. We want what, what needs to be done, not what we want done. I yeah. mean, that could go on forever. You know, you know, some would say, for example, that we need a whole new performing arts center. You know, I don't see that coming out of this. But, you know, now I've probably offended some people that would like to see. Or a hockey arena. You know, that's another one that comes up. <laughs> you know, we're, we're probably not looking at those things. We have one of those on Columbus Road. Every year we put it up at the, <laughs> the first of them. Some, some kids do. Yeah, the kids do. Um, Greg, is there going to be any um, addressing fuel costs, or is that not part of this? That like one building's a heat sieve and another building's very heat tight, or is that out of the? The the actual building envelope is part of what they look at. You know what what should this building perf perform at? It also looks at. Uh, given energy efficiencies and, and where could we improve on those energy efficiencies in these facilities. So if one building is costing us a lot, is there, is there um, cost-effective ways to address that? Or? The, yes. The best way to look at this is, is an overview of all of our facilities that are identified and providing us with the information to say, this is what you should be looking at and this is a generalized cost of what you should be looking at. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all those in favor? We need, we need some motions. Uh, okay. Dave, motion? Uh, Do you want to make, go ahead. No, I don't make motions. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the council approve the following balances to be part of the assigned fund balance on June 30, 2012. And I won't read them all, but as laid out in our materials. Second it. All those in favor? Item 105, these are year-end transfers. Uh, is there a motion? Just before, before a motion is made. You confuse on, me with this because then you talk and everyone talks and then I forget we don't have a I'm sorry. <laughs> Just on item number 655, yeah. the, the amount needs to be two, three hundred and sixty-eight thousand nine seventy. It needs to be an increase of... Uh, 52,000 from the original budget of 316,970. Can you say that once more? Yes. It needs to be, it, is it needs to read 2,378,970 2, from 316,970. He's talking about the 355, the, the 655, the, the pool. To pay for the propane uh, gas and the, the power and some issues with with additional staffing that came about with because of additional revenue. Okay. Is there a decrease in appropriations? <coughs> that yeah, the, the public works would then be reduced by the fifty-two thousand. Uh, two that would be two to uh, one million uh, twelve thousand six twenty-nine. 
Thank you. On a motion? Yes. I move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves in accordance with Article 5, Section 8 of the Council Manager Charter the uh, following transfers between departments, uh, and they are listed uh, on our agenda for review. Seconded. Discussion? You want me to say something? Yeah, oh, I think you should re at least uh, make a comment about the pool issue. Yeah, the, the pool, we, we had a problem with, they ended up putting, as a result of the new heating system in the high school, they put new uh, meters in to measure the, the propane gas being used by the pool. And what, what's happened, what happened was, is that, you know, usually we got a bill once a year from the school department, and, you know, they, they debited our account, credited their accounts, and I thought we were done for the year, and that's why you, you got the number wrong. Well, Greg mentioned something to me about a week, <coughs> week and a half ago, saying, Mike, there's still some more expense with, with the, the propane gas. And it ended up being a lot more than, than I, not that he tried to give me the wrong impression, but I didn't get the impression it was to the degree that it was going to be. And anyway, I, I met with Pauline on uh, Friday, and it ended up, we, uh, we got hit last Friday with a bill for an additional $21,582 in heat. And uh, an additional uh, 28000 for power, for a total of 49582 neither of which I was anticipating when I first gave you the, the council agenda last Wednesday. And, you know, it, it, I think there was some, some communication gaps there. And, you know, it also, you know, I exchanged emails with a couple of you over the, the weekend. It, it also raises concerns with that, that we need some better policies and procedures on looking at the timings of our different allocations and to, to make sure that we're capturing uh, all of them at an appropriate time so that we can better manage our costs throughout the year. This was, this, this was quite frankly embarrassing uh, to send you a memo on Wednesday saying the pool, you know, needed 6000 extra dollars and then to, f to f find out, you know, that it's $58,000, uh, you know, th three days later. So there's a plan for you. There's going to be a lot of dialogue over the summer uh, to make sure it doesn't happen. And the other, the other issue here, and we discussed it briefly this morning at a department head meeting, is that now the pool is effective July 1 community services budget. They didn't, even though the, the budget amounts went up somewhat, in no way did they anticipate these numbers. Because they had bad numbers right. to start with. Because they had, they, had to start with. Right. they didn't have yeah. the full metered information. Right. So when you look at it's short. When you look at the actual number for the year, how does that actually compare with the actual number of the preceding year? Is it at you know, back or is it consistent with it? Uh, well, you know, our, the revenues are up by, uh, you know, about $60,000 from a year ago. But still, as you look at budget to budget, right. the, 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 we're only, it, it was, the revenues are only 8,000 more than budget. Right. Which means that the, the general fund is contributing about forty-five to fifty thousand more to the pool than was intended. Mm. If you net it out, right. not good. But and I understand that from the standpoint of the accounting. I guess stepping back from the accounting and just looking at real operating expenses, are they much high? Are they higher than they were a year ago, or are they in line? You know, the the question is, were they accurate a year ago? Well, that's a good see. you know, last year we spent forty-two thousand power for the pool. 32,349. This year it was 50,964. This is after we've made energy improvements. So it's likely to appreciate it. You know, we thought it would go down and it went up $8,000 or nearly 20%. The heat account, we were charged three years ago 11,700. Last year, 15,000. Uh, and this year we budgeted 16,249. We were just the final bill ended up being 37,831. So it's gone from 15,000 to 37,831. So we really need to look at the actual numbers from the preceding year and this year and to see if what's the correct number. Well, we, we did that, but the problem is in the, the old years, it wasn't, if it, it wasn't metered. Uh, there's a different way of heating. 
you know, we got these, we used to be off the, the main high school boiler, and now we're off all these propane tanks, and there's this Dectron unit that, that heats the water, <coughs> we had problems with that this year. It's, you know, it's a, it's a series of, of uh, things that went wrong, both mechanically, in terms of the Dectron unit, and in, in terms of, uh, you know, we, we, the, the, the costs were there anyway. We just should have had earlier warning of it, yeah, you know. That's my issue. Am I, am I being unfair at all, Greg, or am I misrepresenting anything? Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully I can clarify a couple of them. Speak up so we can hear you. I'm sorry. The the heating for propane, although the equipment we were using is much more efficient than, than we were doing it before, there was no infrastructure to actually calculate out the amount of heating oil that was being used out of the high school boilers. So we would run the large high school, high school boilers year round. The, the assumption was one tank of oil is what it equated to. Un, un, unfortunately, there was no way to actually calculate that out accurately short of doing a complete energy study on the facility. Now what we've done is we've completely separated the utilities for the pool and that shows where the energy was. One of the things that I just recently did was to take the gallonage that we didn't use compared to last year on our heating system, which is approximately, I say approximately, about 35,000 gallons compared to last fiscal year. You take out the approximate 15,000 gallons of energy we wouldn't have used because of the warmer weather. Then you take out the 15,000 gallons that we had planned for efficiency of the new boiler. It's about 5,000 gallons. Well, when you start doing the math and figuring out how much that dollar, you take our original 16, you add about another 16 or so 1,000. Now you start to see that that number two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, really didn't cover the amount of energy necessary um, to heat the, hot, the, the pool water, to heat the space, to heat the fitness stand, center, to heat the locker rooms. That's all under that one piece. So just piece. Say, you're saying that historically we're underestimating the cost of the operation. So now when we have an accurate um, way to calculate what the cost is, we're realizing that um, the numbers were very too low in the past. Correct. So, so this is this is. I mean, this is very important, but it's a financial reporting issue. It's not a mismanagement right. of the facility. Well, no. It, but we also well, it's all of the above. We we also switched the the fuel source for the pool right. from right. heating oil to propane. Right. We and there's a there's a management issue with the the fact that we weren't. We didn't know about. We, we should have known every month. This is where right. you're going. That's yeah. absolutely. And you know, absolutely. to get hit with it on 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 June, whatever last Friday was, or third, it was the Friday. You know, just there, there was a, there was a there was a breakdown in a lot of areas where yeah. where this shouldn't have been. So that means the budget that's being voted on tomorrow. Well, the community services budget's not being voted on tomorrow. The school budget is. But that budget, the community service budget. You know, the school this. budget ought to have lots of surplus since they thought they were paying for all this and now, you know, they're getting all these credits. I'm, just, I, I'm not sure. I'll, but, you know, <laughs> if you, yeah. seriously, but if, if you work that thing through, sure. that's, that, that should happen. be the result. It's about $50,000. Yeah. That should be the result. Absolutely. Greg, can I ask you two questions? Sure. One is, have we done any comparables to other towns and how much they pay for their pools? Are we, like, way over? Or is this just the price of doing business with a pool? I've done some calculations based on square footage for utility costs and based on the fuel type that we use, and we're right on target based on the fuel type. Again, if we had natural gas, it would cost us less to heat the pool because the per unit cost is less. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I, Michael brought up was about the electricity, and I do want to touch on that real quickly because we have a piece of equipment that's 100% electrically operated, which is the Dectron unit. Well, this year we put about thirty, forty thousand dollars into repairs of that, and now it's working the way it's supposed to. Unfortunately, to that, that also means it's consuming the energy that it should have been consuming several years ago. Um, 
So those numbers kind of get again skewed. So when you add all that in, you do the square footage, you look at it, the temperatures at which we operate our pool, we're in target for what, we're, what we should be doing. And my other question was, do you have just a, a, a guesstimate on how much it costs per year each degree that you heat the pool? Because I'm a frequent user and I find it overly warm. I could easily tolerate five Well, degrees. I can tell you I still get calls that they, people find it too cold. We run the pool about 80 to 81 degrees. It, it averages cool. about 80 and a half degrees. Um, if you're a competitive swimmer, that's too warm. Absolutely. That's, um, that's really warm. <laughs> If but, I mean, is, that, is that a significant cost, or is it? Is it uh, every every degree adds considerable cost to operations. So my question is: Has anyone involved in these decisions considered the possibility of dropping the temperature? It, and you'll make some people upset, but other people will be happy, like the competitive swimmer. I mean, even like two degrees, and see what what would be the what would be the savings. I think you I find the one. yes. It has been considered each and every year that the pool has been open. <laughs> And it, it's a constant battle between those that are more athletic and those that use the pool in a more recreational, sedentary way. Therapeutic. Standing there with a three-year-old, it's kind of cold. It, it is. We, we try to balance that. Um, I, to be honest with you, we, uh, when I got here two years ago, it used to be maintained at 82, and we did drop it a degree um, to try to lessen the costs. Um, fortunately, it was also the same time that we really didn't have any real way to measure that based on the oil coming out of a tank for the high school. So, Just to put this in perspective again, to heat and power the pool is about $88,000 a year. Not cheap. Pool operations are very expensive. The water cost is, is minimal because the water you know, we fill it once a year. You have a big sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> Pool operations are very, very high. I mean, you have to look at uh, the fact that you're evaporating water constantly. You have to remove that from the air. It, it, it's just the, the sheer operations of, of a pool are expensive. Thank you. I'm sorry, Sarah. Uh, this is a question for Mike, actually, just especially for the listening public at home. Would you review, please, the changes in the pool and where it is, under which budget now, when that's taking place? Yes, uh, from now until June 30, the pool is part of the municipal budget. As part of the budget process this year, it was moved to community services, and it's now part of the community. It will be effective July 1 part of the community services budget. The community services budget is a standalone budget, separate and apart from both the school budget and the town budget. However, it, it is uh, initially reviewed by the school department uh, and the council has final say on it. So, <clears throat> therefore, this um, latest bill will be the last bill submitted specifically to the municipal budget. For the pool, uh, I hope so. But it sounds like the community services budget for next year may not be adequate to cover. You know, I, I think you, I think the council needs additional reports on all of these these topics. I think when okay. you know when when staff comes and tells you at a meeting that you know something's fifty thousand dollars different than we thought it was last week. Uh, you know, we've tried to pull together some quick answers since last Friday. Yeah. I, I think this needs a little more focus and attention, and I think you, you ought to get a, an answer on that with, with, with pretty exact numbers of uh, what they are, what's anticipated, what the, the potential challenge is. And, and I'm happy to work with uh, Mr. Governor. Through the, with the superintendent of schools initially, and then with the finance chair, and then whoever Meredith wants to. You know, if you, you know I, I go through Meredith, and you know, I'd leave it up to others who else is involved. But, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, we've got to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. And, 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 and we need to know, you know, it doesn't matter if it's just in the municipal budget. It's, it, there's an overall accounting issue in terms of cost allocation and uh, the way things ought to be happening so that we, we don't get these surprises. But the schools should be benefiting because they, they've, you know, they've been, they, this has all come out of their budget. And this is a credit to theirs. So, you know, it's... Uh, 
Will that be part of the capital expense um, review? The pool is one of the facilities that will be looked at. Okay. Other questions, comments? All those in favor? Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Uh, this is the second opportunity for citizens to discuss something that is not on the agenda. Seeing no one, um, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Oh, wait. I have a question. Did I, I'm just guess blanking here. Did we vote on item? Uh, oh, we voted the whole item. We took all these on block. In block. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning? Thank you very much. Been a long meeting for you, Sarah. Yeah.